So if you have your cheat sheets tonight or your Bible, we're going to go to the first, second book of Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 5 through 11. Uh, this is part three in a giving church, the church in action. Uh, this is the third principle that we see that our brother Paul spoke about. The third principle deals with sowing, the benefits of sowing, and the law of the benefit of sowing and reaping. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at verse 5. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty. Whereof ye have noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as co of covetousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye also, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, He hath given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. Let's just love the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, for what you have given to us and what you have entrusted to us. Lord, I thank you for a giving church. Lord, that they give out of a heart of cheerfulness. Oh, God, and we know that you're a supplier of our need. You're a faithful giver. Oh, hallelujah. We just give you praise in your awesome and mighty name. Hallelujah. And everyone said, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Uh, tonight, in this third principle of sowing and reaping, simply stated, there is a connection between what we sow and definitely what we will reap. Uh, if we sow sparingly, just count on reaping sparingly. If you sow a quantity of seed, be prepared to reap bountifully. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, Paul said, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Yes. What a wonderful promise we have tonight. If we endure. No, it's not just endure. But if we're not weary 
in well-doing. And I know the body gets tired and life's stress upon the body brings additional stress upon the spirit. But what the Apostle Paul was inspired to write to encourage the church of Galicia, do what you're doing and hang on for dear life. Don't give up and don't give in and never, 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 never quit. Oh, hallelujah. You might become weary, but don't give in to the weariness. Because in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 through 9 is not primarily a threat. And I know sometimes we can take, especially as preachers, we can take this uh, particular text and uh, we can threaten you within an inch of your life if you don't give, if you don't hold out, if you, you know. But it's not so much a threat, but it's words of an encouragement. Just to think about the promise we have to be faithful, to be true to the end. Jesus said, it's not to the one who runs the fastest, right. but it's the one who crosses the finish line, regardless of how fast or how slow you get there, that you're faithful, that you persevere to the end. You know, it testifies of the fact that faithfulness in sowing leads to faithfulness in reaping. That's right. The only thing that can prevent reaping is a failure to faithfully sow. A farmer can readily understand if he expects a harvest, he's got to get out in the spring and plant the seed. If he wants a good crop, he has to make sure that he has the best seed. Or, you know, and I know these farmers say there's a skill and there's technology and they're always looking for the best seed and they're not looking for the best promoting seed or the best slick salesman. But he's wanting something that's tried, proof, and that's been very well tested because he's investing his money, he's investing his time in a crop, in a harvest. I plant a little, reap only a little. If one plants much, he also can expect to reap much. We should never view our giving as a, an avenue to gain riches. I know there's individuals that preach a prosperity doctrine. Give! Give so that it, you can be blessed. You know, give a hundredfold, give a thousandfold so that you can become rich. God didn't intend for anybody to be in poverty. He intended for his people to be a blessed people, to be a rich people. Well, they kind of got that misconstrued. Yes, God did bless us. He did give his life that we would be a blessed people. We may not ever be blessed financially, monetarily, but I tell you what, how I've been blessed among all riches. Oh, hallelujah. You know, there are blessings that have been upon my life because of God's blessings that's been endowed to me. And I know that there's people here tonight that you know that of the same blessing, the same type of experiences that God has blessed you with. None of us, and I can tell by looking at all of us, that we haven't missed very meals. Amen? <laughs> now, if we miss meals, it's probably because uh, it was a voluntary act. But because there was no money, zero, the bank book has nothing, you had to search through the couches and the chairs, move the furniture to, for the pennies and the nickels and the dimes that might be falling on the floor somewhere. But I can almost guarantee the fact that, you know, sometimes it looks like the barrel's getting close to being empty. That's right. Going to the cupboard and it's getting a little bare. 
But you know, even the poorest of the poor, even if their covers are bare, I have found that they have food to eat. But what I have also found is that in their cupboards are stuff they really don't like. I have never enjoyed collard greens. I don't like spinach. Now, I, I like raw spinach, but I don't like cooked kid spinach. And I remember one time when uh, uh, traveling, uh, a lot of the preachers and the churches would give us a grocery shower of canned goods. And uh, that was always helpful because uh, we got the benefits of people's leftovers, the stuff that they really didn't like. You would believe the cans of these greens that, you know, and I know that the expiration dates are, weren't put on cans years ago like they are today. Uh, and I know that uh, you might have a can of something stored in your cellar, in your basement, in your cupboards that may have been produced 10 long years ago. Do you know that that, that product is probably safe to eat today unless your can has some signs of exploding? You know, when the top or the bottoms, you know, pooched out. Then I don't think I would want to eat it. But, you know, when you think about the food that people purchased and either they had too much of that they really liked and, and they were being generous or it wasn't the fact that they really didn't like it or their family. Now, Sister Sandra and I, we like sauerkraut. But it's not something that I would want to eat every day. And when they have it on sale, you know, I, I love the one brand of sauerkraut that uh, you have to keep refrigerated. Uh, it is kind of fresh, and uh, it's really nice, especially it's for uh, Polish sausages and Italian sausages to cook in it. It's great eating, but it's not it's something I would just love to eat every day. But within these blessings, there are sometimes there's things that we have stored or hoarded and we forgot about that they've been there. And we then we get into a place where, for God, you haven't been as good to me. And, I, and we forget to uh, account for all the many blessings that God has. We sang that song last Sunday night, count your many blessings, name them one by one. It is good to have a record or a journal. Uh, I don't care how young or how old you are. It's good to have a journal to remember the many blessings that God has given to you. And see how rich God has richly blessed your life. We see that giving is not a quick or a get rich quick scheme as some false prophets currently in the media proclaim. Oh, from rags to riches. Uh, we are merely stewards, not owners. Uh, if we, the more we give or the more that comes our way, the more that we are held responsible to the master. Yet the principle of sowing and reaping clearly is connected with our giving. Sowing is an act of faith. And young people, this is a burden on my heart that you learn this lesson at your age. Don't wait till you get to be 50 to 60 years old to start to reach out to learn some benefits of giving. Get a burden in your heart that if you don't have one, find a place in the privacy of a corner or under the altar and say, God, give me a desire to exercise my faith. And you know what? He will do it and he'll start with giving. You see, when a man puts a seed in the ground, it requires faith. Six things that a farmer that has an active faith 